So I'm going to talk to you about uh, something I got to do this summer. Um, there's a position called the God's Call Counselor. How many of you guys have been to camp throughout the summer? Yeah, I've met a lot of you. That's where I met a lot of you um, this summer. Um, my job was to hang out at camp um, with kids and talk about ministry um, and kind of just listen to kids talk about um, their excitement, their passion, uh, where they think God is calling them, if God is calling them. Um, I got to answer all sorts of questions. Um, it was an incredible opportunity. And if you're a college student um, heading on the track of um, like pastoral ministry ordination, um, you can apply for um, this position. And it's all summer. You get to go to um, all of the different camps um, in our conference. We have four. Um, three of them do like regular camps all summer. Um, and I got to go to a variety of camps. I went to regular camp um, where it's just a week you do regular camp things. Um, I got to go to music camp um, where the focus is uh, singing and you um, put on a, like a show, um, which was really neat. I've never done anything like that before. Um, and I went to musical theater camp, which um, we put on a, like a theater production in a week. Um, and it was incredible to see God move through those experiences. So Tim, you can now come back up and talk about your <laughs> internship. Guys can't get rid of me. Okay, um, internship. Ooh. I knocked over our Lego cross, sorry. We'll fix it later. Or now, you guys look mad. Okay. Um, yeah, internship. Do it. Um, it is an awesome blessing. It's a great experience. Um, I couldn't ask for more. I couldn't have got more. Um, I thought, you know, I'd be, you know, just out there helping everybody. But really, it, the internship has just been helping me grow. Um, so, yeah, I just got some notes here. Bring, you know, being involved in a church, whether it's an internship, um, you're in the youth group, you're, you're just, you're not a Sunday church guy, like, girl, you don't just go Sundays, and you're like, ah, oh, church Sunday, woo, done. you like, do something more. Like, it's, it's, you need to be, the, I think, you need to be in more than just a Sunday thing, because that's, God wants every inch of our lives. He doesn't just want Sundays. Um, so in, in the internship, I've gotten a chance to do some community outreach. Uh, we have this thing called a rock program for, somebody shout out ages, I forget. Elementary to high school guys, they're just kids, you know. Um, elevation, Saturday service, um, that's like a contemporary, newer service. Um, of course, we have like our youth group that I've been able to get involved in. Um, with the community outreach, um, that's been really cool for me because I've been able to uh, just to learn to give till it hurts. I think um, that's a valuable lesson to be learned. They're a valuable lesson that I've learned that I, f I feel God has been showing me. Um, Matt led into it a little bit yesterday. Um, I've been able to just connect with this, this guy, just, you know, walking around, Matt, one day he's like, yo, Timbo, you're going, walking the town, I'm like, all right, whatever, you know, um, God's, God's blessed me with the, the gift of gab, my mom calls it, but I'm sure there's another word for it, um, so I'm, I'm a people person, and so Matt, he's like, this will be perfect for you, you know, just go out, figure out what the community needs, and I, I've, I really like how our church does that, how it uh, is involved in the community because, you know, inside these walls, awesome stuff goes on. We got to bring it out there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was able to meet this guy on his porch, you know, in particular. Um, sitting there with his buddy, you know, started out with how about those Steelers to the weather to, you know, hour and a half later, I knew the guy's life story. So um, really cool to get to know him, his struggles. Um, he's just become a great friend of mine. You know, he 
got mad love there and uh, trust and you know it's just it's awesome to be able to see him grow and um, that get like that feeling to see someone to see God come into somebody's life is is awesome and I you know you hear like I used to hear in church like like you know like what's that hymn you know go tell it on the mountain like that one you know it's not just a hymn you know it's there's some real um, awesome stuff there when it happens. Yeah, there's a back. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just being able to share share God's love with um, with your friends and your family and and others is has been a real blessing. Um, I have here jotted down something that's always stuck in my mind. Um, you know, I think sometimes we tend to, at least I do, uh, tend to go and say, you know, sports, academics, religion. Na -na 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 -na. It's you know, when when we're in a relationship with Jesus, it's like, it's a life changer. It's like, I, you know, whole. 360, 180, a lot of degrees in there that are changing. Um, so, yeah, faith without works is dead. So just uh, try and remember that. Um, some last ending notes here before I get to my uh, little video my man Ryan's got for me over there. Um, yeah, show God's love through our actions. Take your take your own cross up every day. Die to yourself. That's something I struggle with personally is dying to myself. Um, putting yourself before others, like in how we read in Proverbs or John or one of those. It was in the Bible. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, just be a living sacrifice for him. You know, he... he, he gave us life he breathed breath into our lungs and you know give it back to him good morning um think of the word church what do you think of some of you might be thinking of a building with a steeple some of you might be thinking of your own churches maybe the inside the sanctuary maybe your sunday school classrooms when i hear the word church i think of my friends I think of Miriam in Germany. I think of Edison in Mozambique. I think of Megan in Virginia. I think of Early in the Philippines. These are people that are young adults, United Methodists, all over the world. And they're part of my church, and they're part of yours. The United Methodist Church is one global church. And this became very clear to me this past summer when I was at the Global Young People's Convocation in Berlin, Germany. Every four years, the Young People's Ministry, an initiative of the United Methodist Church, brings young people together from all over the world to share their life experiences so that their stories can transform the world. This past July, I was selected as a voting delegate for the Northeast jurisdiction. The Global Young People's Convocation was a time when young people from the United Methodist Church could come together and worship together, fellowship together, take leadership development sessions together, and we voted on legislation that was proposed to by youth and young adults from all over the world. It either was written by them or directly affected you, me, young adults, and youth and young adults all over the world in our church. The legislation that we approved there then gets sent to General Conference in 2012. While at the convocation, we had opportunities to tour Berlin to fellowship with local United Methodist congregations in Berlin to hear their story, to hear their history, to hear how it was local congregations around the world that helped them thrive, um, to hear how they had support from all over the world. It was very interesting to hear. Um, a lot of their local churches were affected um, by the wars that happened over there, and they only survived because of other churches around the world. The scripture verse from that conference came from Ephesians 4. It was 4 through 6. You are all called to travel the same road and in the same direction. 
So stay together, both outwardly and in inwardly. You have one master, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who rules over all, works through all, and is present in all. Everything you are and think and do is permeated in oneness. It seems very hard to believe that there could be unity with 350 young people from over 25 countries, but there can be. The dictionary defines unity as the absence of diversity, but I think that's wrong. There can be diversity within our unity. The planners of the Global Young People's Convocation hoped that young people would come together and see eye to eye, that we would connect with one another and our loving God. Their mission was completed. Every day that we shared together in worship of our loving God and fellowship with one another, we were living proof that unity in our church and our world is a reality. By the end of convocation, we were living out the theme of the convocation, which was one Lord, one church, one world. During our legislative session, I watched as the delegates from the other countries fought for time at the microphone. Delegates from Africa and the Philippines and Europe would try to get their opinions known, even if it wasn't the right time. During one of our breaks, one of the delegates from Mozambique asked me why I hadn't gone up to the microphone yet. I hadn't even raised my hand. My response to him was that I guess I didn't have anything to say. He looked shocked at my answer. He said that I had an opinion that I must have you know, read this legislation, I must have had something to say. Everyone in the United Methodist Church gets a say in how things are run. He asked me if I didn't I, want, didn't I want to have my say. I found it very hard to argue with him. Whether you are called to be a pastor or to scoop ice cream, we are all called to be actively involved in our church, and this is something you can do now. As a young person in the United Methodist Church, your voice matters. Um, I have a video to show you about the trip. It's really hard to explain when you haven't been there to witness all of it. Um, so I brought a video clip. I didn't actually take any of the videos. Um, the Southwest jurisdiction took all the video clips. I just kind of strung them all together for you. Um, if this is something you're interested in, because I know you're not going to remember a whole lot about what I said, because um, you guys look really tired. <laughs> Um, there's a website, globalyoungpeople.org, that you can go to. Um, they have all the information there. Um, the next Global Young People's Convocation will be in 2014. I don't know where it'll be yet. I don't think that's been decided. Um, but I know I will have aged out by then, but it's something that I want to go to as an observer because it was just such a neat experience. So I would encourage all of you, if you hear about this in 2014, to want to be there because it was just so cool. Scholarships, they're important. Grants are important. Loans are important. One of the things that I'm delighted to say is that I do believe the United Methodist Church, and specifically the Susquehanna Conference, they're serious when they say that we really do want to support your efforts in um, continuing your education so you can provide ministry. So what we have done is in your packets that you received, there is a, a white paper in there that has a listing all the scholarships that um, uh, Pam Ford and I are aware of, we've made a listing there. So that's a good start for you to start looking. You can also go to the Susquehanna Conference website, the front page of it, and you also find a listing there of scholarships that are available or grants that are available through either the Greater United Methodist Church or our conference. So you'd want to make sure you look there. In the back, there is a brochure like this, right where Jerry's standing, that round table. This is another listing of scholarships. Some of them are duplicated, but it is well worth looking at. Contact information in the back is a Reverend uh, Ronald McAway. He's an excellent person to contact about student aid and student loans in our um, conference. And uh, so you want to make sure you get one of them if you're interested. And shortly, who does not get the quick link? QuickLink is a um, email, a news, um, it, it, it's an email that you receive from Jerry Wolgamuth, our Susquehanna conference, and it lets you know about news and activities throughout our conference. If you're not receiving that, you should be. You simply have to email Jerry Wolgamuth, you go to our conference website, and say, I want to be on that uh, QuickLink listing. That's where you're going to find out news about our conference and our church. And one of the things you're going to find about shortly is that you're going to see that it's time for you to apply for the Thomas Cartwright Scholarship. So this is another scholarship for individuals who may be interested 
in, uh, who are pursuing uh, the ordained ministry, who are from our conference and who are certified candidates. So it's something you want to make sure that you look into. Another, uh, another scholarship through our conference is the Maud Jackson Karen Lehman Scholarship. These um, brochures are also back on that table as well, and this is something you can also find on our conference website. So you want to make sure that you look into this as well. This is for women going into ministry. And I'm just going to take this time. I know that the adults in my covenant group did receive this brochure, but if you've not received this, go back to that table and pick one up. This lists all the tools and activities and opportunities that we provide through the Enlistment Interpretation Committee, which is part of the Conference Board of Ordained Ministry. The board believes so strongly in the ministry that you are going to be doing that if you think we can get days in and food for $35 on a weekend, you're greatly mistaken. And the board says, each of you are worth whatever it is we need to do to sponsor you so you get here and hopefully help discern your call. On the back here is contact information as well. If you go to the conference website and you will see a listing on links and it says the Board of Ordained Ministry. And within that you'll find the committees. Thank you, Warren. And the Enlistment Interpretation Committee is also listed. Are the scholarships only if you go to a Methodist college? And if so, what are the Methodist colleges? No, that's an excellent question, Stephanie. Inside your packet you're going to find that there's a thing called the University Senate, which is the United Methodist Church. They approve different colleges and seminaries. And you can go to um, the General Board of Higher Education, and the University Senate listing is also within that packet. And that will tell you what colleges, as well as seminaries, are accepted by the United Methodist Church. OK? No. No. No, it needs to be University Senate approved. They're not all United Methodists, though. Okay. Only if you're going to become a pastor. It's, it could be if you're going to become a teacher, too. They want to help the Methodist students. Or it's only if you want to be an elder. There are scholarships. There's scholarships, anything. Yeah, right. It, 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 read the scholarship, and it will let you know. But if you're going into the candidacy process, you want to make sure that the undergrad and grad school is through the University Senate. OK? I hope that answers that. All right, adults, listen up. There's this really opportunity for your youth, but adults, you need to recommend um, your students to a camp in the summer called Leadership Camp. Um, it's a newer camp. Um, this is it'll be the fourth, third year um, that this camp has happened. And it's for students who are going into 11th and 12th grade. Um, and it's just a week of learning how to be a leader, um, learning what that means, what that looks like in your church, in your school. Um, it's a really great opportunity to meet um, other kids who are going through the same thing. Um, you don't have to want to go into ministry um, to be recommended to this camp, um, but it's to develop leaders. So if um, adults, if there are youth in your, um, in your youth groups, um, in your church that you would like to see come to this camp, um, there's a form um, that you have to fill out to recommend them. So um, students, if you're interested in going to leadership camp, talk to your, um, your youth leader, your pastor, um, whatever they may be. Oh, sure. There are some kids in the room who came from leadership camp. So if you would like to know more about that, um, the kids who have gone, if you could stand up. Thanks. Um, next, we will be hearing from Julie and Calvin about exploration. All right, everybody is stretched and awake now. Yes, good to see you. Well, my name is Julie Piper, and where's Amanda at? Are you, Amanda, are you up here? Oh, are you coming up too? Yep, there she comes. There she comes. But, um, Calvin and I will be chaperoning a group this upcoming November, November 11th through the 13th. Please mark that, that date on your calendar. If you are in the age range of 18 years to 26 years, and this is an awesome weekend, much like this weekend, only it's on a larger scale. And as you come together, 
you'll be able to meet other people who are just like you going through the same process from all over the country and maybe even the world. So I invite you. You'll be hearing more about it because the registration uh, information is not up online yet. I will be emailing you shortly. And um, the thing I don't want to scare away, I don't want to scare you away from this because it is a trip to Missouri because the generos generosity of our conference, they pay for a very large portion of this. And actually, you pay very minimal. And what we do ask it that is paid is paid by the local church. We ask that you take it back to your local church and ask them to help sponsor you. So please, when you get an email from me and you think this might be something you would like to do, please come with us and we'll have a great time. So Calvin, I'm going to let you talk a little bit about it. And actually, we have Amanda and Chris up here too who have, who have been there before. So. Um, let them talk first. Okay. Chris. Sure. So, yeah. so who has enjoyed the weekend so far? Raise your hand. Who has enjoyed the food so far this weekend? What about the speakers? What about the music? What about the new friends you met? That's the same kind of experience you'll get at Exploration. It's the same kind of experience I've got. It's just on a larger scale. And we meet people from all over the country. My roommate was from Texas, and I think we talk every month. And he's pursuing ordained elder also. So it's just a great connection, a way to meet young people who feel the call into ministry or who are still discerning the call. So if you're enjoying this weekend, you'll enjoy that so much more too. Do you like free stuff? Yeah. I remember I needed like an extra suitcase to bring free stuff home. I don't know if it was like that when you were there. Yeah, I was there like two times ago. I don't know, a couple years. I'm old, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, uh, I went, I was like 24 when I went. Yeah, I'm old, I know. Um, I was like 24, and so I was like really, yeah, I was already in seminary actually when I went, and um, I had a youth with me, which was really an incredible experience because um, we were in different covenant groups, obviously, but um, it was just incredible to see her um, there with me, but then also to see how I've connected. I'm still in connection with the covenant group that I was with then. Um, so it's just an awesome opportunity to, to meet other people just like you. Um, there's covenant groups, but they're very specific. Like everybody in my covenant was like 24. Um, um, and the exact same place I was. So that was pretty awesome. But there was a lot of people, a lot of free stuff, and a lot of fun. It's, it's on Facebook, so if you type in Facebook, Exploration 2011, you'll find more information there. I, I just wanted to share one, one bit. I went to Exploration some years ago, and then last year had the opportunity to go as, as a, a leader. Um, the connections that I made at Exploration years ago were brought forth in the connection when I went this last time. Um, and it really has been encouraging to ministry and encouraging to the faith. Um, to know that even in the smallest of places that God can call us out to, to do amazing things. And when you do those things, there are so many witnesses ready to cheer you on. That's the power of God's call as well as exploration. We will always be here to support you and encourage you no matter where you are. Come and explore with us. God bless you.